In this tutorial, we want to talk about measuring the performance of our Julia code. As we know, the first step to understanding anything is to measure it. The same goes for writing high-performance Julia code. Whenever you care about the performance of your code, the time macro will end up being one of your most widely used commands on the Julia prompt. Built into the base Julia runtime, this macro wraps the provided expression to calculate and print the elapsed time while running it. It also measures and prints the amount of memory allocated while running that code. For example, for measuring the execution time of calculating the square root of random vectors of length 1000. We use the time macro which prints the time taken in seconds and the amount of memory allocated while running that code. Since Julia is a just-in-time compiled language, this means that the Julia compiler and runtime compiles any Julia code into machine code the first time it sees it. This means that if you measure the execution time of any Julia expression that executes for the first time, you will end up measuring the time and memory use required compiling this code. So whenever you time any piece of Julia code, it's crucial to run it at least once prior to measuring the execution time. Always measure the second or later invocation. An enhanced version of the time macro is the timev macro. This macro operates in a manner very similar to add time, but measures some additional memory statistics. As you can see, elapsed time, GC time, which stands for garbage collection time, and other useful information are displayed. The add time macro is used to time the execution of the square root function, and the result of that function is passed as an argument to the sum function. Elapsed macro is another built-in macro that can can be used to measure the execution time of Julia programs. Unlike the add time and time v macros, which output the time information to the console, the elapsed macro returns the time in seconds as a result. This means that these resulting times can be used for further processing. For example, they can be used to assert performance limits during unit testing. For this purpose, I import the test library and use the test macro to compare whether the execution time of the input expression is less than 10 to the power of minus 5 or equal to it. Since I want to use the mean function, I import the statistics library. By the way, if you are enjoying the content, I constantly make Julia programming tutorials. Please like this video and also subscribe to the channel. Also, if you are new to Julia programming language, I have a Julia programming for beginners playlist. The link to the playlist is down in the description. In addition, if you have any questions, please comment them down below the video. Now I define a function that creates 1000 sets of 10,000 random numbers and then computes the mean of the squares for each set. We call the function once to ensure that all the code is compiled. Now I want to install another package called timer outputs and pass the name of the package to the pkg.add function. Once installed, the package can be loaded. Next, a global timer output object is created. This will store the results of our timing runs. Now we can time individual parts of the computation. We will reuse the random mean squared function we wrote previously. We annotate the code inside the function via the timeit macro, which takes as an argument the time output object, a name to refer to each invocation, and the expression to be measured. Now we run the function random mean squared time and then view the timer outputs using the print timer function which we passed it to object to it. The output nicely summarizes the timings for the nested calls and calculates the aggregates. For long simulations or complex optimization problems, this way of measuring timings can be very useful. The time macro is useful for identifying and investigating bottlenecks in our program. However, it's not very accurate in terms of fine-grained analysis of fast programs. If you want to, for example, compare two functions that take a few milliseconds to run, the amount of error and variability in the measurement will easily swamp the running time of this function. Then the solution would be to use the benchmark tools.jl package for a statistically accurate benchmarking. Again, we use the package.add function to install the benchmark tools package. Here, instead of using add time macro, we use the add benchmark macro. Unlike add time, however, this macro can only be used in front of function calls rather than any expression. It will evaluate the parameters of the function separately and then call the function multiple times to build up a sample of execution times. The output will show the mean time taken to run on the code, but with statistically accurate upper and lower bounds. These statistics are estimated by evaluating the expression multiple times, with the number of evaluations determined in order to maximize the accuracy of the measurements. These estimates attempt to account for the noise inherent in running benchmarks on real machines. As an example, we measured the running time of creating a random array and calculating the square root of all of its elements. A simpler version of the output can be obtained by using the btime macro. This macro does the same operations as the benchmark macro but provides simpler output that is similar to the basic time macro. Furthermore, it also returns the value of the expression that it evaluated. However, over here we are using the semicolon at the end of the line to suppress the output.
Here is the timer outputs package GitHub page. They've already mentioned that its main functionality is the add time it macro, similar to the add time macro in base, except one also assigns a label to the code section being timed. They've also provided example output and the instruction for using the package. Also, they have provided settings for printing. The package also provides additional features which are out of the scope of this tutorial. And also, here is the GitHub page for the benchmark tools that JL package. They provide a comprehensive guide on how to install the package and they provide detailed documentation for the usage of the package. I've already explained the essential things that you need to know to use the Benchmark JL's package. If you don't want to miss out the future videos on the Benchmark Tools.JL package, please subscribe to my channel. As we have seen, macros are useful to measure the performance of individual expressions. But to fully understand how larger code bases perform, we need a profiler. The Julia runtime includes a built-in profiler which can be used to measure how long each line of code takes to run relative to a certain code base. It can therefore be used to identify bottlenecks in code which can in turn be used to prioritize optimization efforts. In the Julia repo, we use the write square bracket to go into the package mode and add the profile package to our Julia environment. This may the add profile macro available this measures and stores the performance profile of the expression supplied to it here again we define a function that creates 1000 sets of 10,000 random numbers and then compute the mean of the squares for each set after calling the function once to ensure that all the code is compiled we can run the profiler over this code as follows this will execute the function while collecting profile information the function will return as normal and the collected profile information will be stored in memory the output from the profiler is a hierarchical list of code locations representing the call stack for the program. The number against each line counts the number of times this line was sampled by the profiler. Therefore, the higher the number, the greater the contribution of that line to the total runtime of the program. It indicates the time spent on the line and all its callees. If the hierarchy is too deeply nested, thereby making the output confusing, you can get a flat output by calling profile.print and specify a format, for example, flat. In addition, in order to profile a different program, during a Julia session that is already running, it may be necessary to clear the stored profile from memory. The profile that clear function does this and must therefore be run between any two invocations of add profile within the same Julia process. There are some packages that provide graphical user interface for seeing the output of the profiler. However, at the time of recording this video, most of these packages are full of bugs and they are not cross-platform. To wrap up this tutorial, the two macros at benchmark and at B time should be your standard method to measure performance in Julia. In rare cases, such as for long-running programs that take too long and cannot be executed multiple times, you may fall back to the add time macro. However, such occasions should be rare. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future Julia programming tutorials. See you all later.